G'day mate, 40 here. So I was not expecting that. Donald Trump found guilty on all counts. So many reactions. Uh, number one, uh, Trump's opposition aren't idiots, right? They've been highly effective in hamstringing him from accomplishing what he wants to accomplish. And uh, the, the Russia gate, Right, the claim that uh, there was some unprecedented level of cooperation between Donald Trump and Vladimir Putin and Russia to co-opt uh, the American electoral system and to interfere in American politics. Right, it was the number one story in the country between January 2016 until the release of the Mueller report in 2019. And as far as its effectiveness at hamstringing Trump and his agenda, it was highly effective. And it doesn't matter that it wasn't based on substance. It was just a very effective tool at reducing, reducing the effectiveness of, of Donald Trump. So too, this criminal conviction of Donald Trump is now a convicted felon. Uh, on the face of it seems very effective way of uh, reducing Trump's abilities to campaign for president of the United States. So I'm primarily interested in raw power. I'm not primarily interested in the legality or the ethics of what either side has done here. I'm interested primarily in the exercise of raw power and the Democrats seem quite effective at exercising power to convict Donald Trump of a felony on completely unprecedented legal terms. But it just shows how effective they are, just as they put through many changes to the electoral system prior to the 2020 presidential election, and they were more effective in that regard than the Republicans. And so that's a large reason the Democrats won the presidential election in November of 2020, because they were simply more effective at working the system and changing the system, adapting the system, like passing new legislation to make it easier to vote by mail, getting funds to turn out the vote in Democratic strongholds. So the Republican lost in 2020 because the Democrats simply played the game better. Then in 2022, Republicans did much worse than expected in the midterm elections because the Democrats again just played the game better. And now on the face of it, it looks like the Democrats have played the game better. They've got uh, Donald Trump as a convicted felon. Who knows, could very well be sentenced to prison. They are playing the game more effectively. Now, eventually, those with some like, niche advantage, all right, they have to deal with new competition that incorporates the advantages that, uh, that the first movers developed. So the Democrats are the first movers in pushing forward 2020 election voting law changes and they have been the first movers in pushing forward this prosecution of Donald Trump and so now we'll see if the Republicans can learn from that and overcome the first mover advantage that the Democrats have consistently wielded over the past few years. So Russiagate was the number one news story in America for almost three years without needing truth behind it. Sure, many of the, the elementary details were true, but the upshot of the allegations that Russia corrupted, perverted our electoral system to such an extent that Russia put Donald Trump in office in 2016, that was bogus. And there was never any evidence that Donald Trump worked actively with the Russians to corrupt America's political system. But strategy was highly effective at reducing Donald Trump's effectiveness. 
And now Donald Trump gets increasingly tied up in trials and he'll get tied up with the consequences of this felony conviction. And uh, right now it looks like a very effective strategy the Democrats are using. It reminds me of uh, Bill Belichick's teams, particularly when they played Peyton Manning and the Indianapolis Colts, right? They'd instruct their, their defense, particularly the defensive backfield, to just assault the opposing team's receivers on the theory that in a big game, the referees are not gonna to wanna to throw a pass interference flag on every down. And so, New England Patriots won their first Super Bowl against the Los Angeles Rams by routinely assaulting the uh, key Rams running back, who was the key to the whole Los Angeles offense. And they just brutalized him and tackled him and made him a non-factor in the game because they figured that the rest likely wouldn't want to throw a flag on every play. And then to keep uh, Peyton Manning and the Indianapolis Colts under control, again, uh, Bill Belichick and the Patriots would press every advantage, right? They would instruct their defense to manhandle the Colt receivers on the theory that uh, Indianapolis wouldn't be able to fight back effectively. So Democrats have uh, push forward electoral changes to make it easier for their voters to get out to vote, thinking that uh, this would be the way to electoral advantage. And now they've pushed forward the legal system to prosecute, successfully prosecute and convict Donald Trump of 34 felonies. And so the Democrats definitely have the first mover advantage, and the Patriots won a lot of Super Bowls. And they, Apparently, uh, tape recorded illegally, posing sideline signals to the defense and to the offense, and uh, perhaps even did, did other shenanigans, pushing the law to the limit in the pursuit of victory. And it seems to be a good... So, it's not like the Democrats are doing this to every Republican, right? It's only Donald Trump who is encountering uh, this level of uh, prosecution. So to a large extent, Donald Trump bro has brought this on himself through his own reckless behavior. All right, this isn't just uh, Mr. Smith Trump goes to Washington and the forces of darkness are trying to bring him down. Huh. Donald Trump did a lot of very dubious things that then fired up the opposition and they had so much to work with to reduce him to the state he's in now where he's just facing trial after trial after trial right these trials aren't based on absolutely nothing right they're based on Donald Trump's long history of dodgy behavior Right, for the course of his adult life, Donald Trump has managed to stay just one step ahead of the sheriff. And most of us would be exhausted by the kind of tension and pressure and risk of social ostracism that comes with this risky approach. And somehow for Donald Trump, he's been after you know, pull it off with a lot of losses. But also a lot of victories. So I can see why his supporters look at the guy as the most courageous American politician in memory. Like, I don't want to take any partisan sides here. I think that the Democrats have very effectively played the game legally to pull this off and Donald Trump is substantially to blame because of his own bad choices and reckless behavior. Donald Trump gave his enemies a sword just like Richard Nixon. Richard Nixon gave his enemies a sword and then they used it to bring him down. 
So like Richard Nixon, Donald Trump has overwhelmingly alienated the elite. So the more intelligent a person, the more likely they are to be anti-Trump. And so Richard Nixon found he couldn't govern when 90% plus of America's elites were lined up against him. Donald Trump found it was very difficult to govern when at least 80% of the countries were lined up against him. So elites punch far above their weight. Right? One billionaire is in all likelihood going to be more effective when it comes to changing the political game than 10,000 skinheads who didn't graduate high school. So you don't want to alienate unnecessarily anyone. You want the best relations possible with everyone. And you really don't want to alienate the elite. And Donald Trump's lowbrow rhetoric and lowbrow behavior have like consistently alienated him with the elite who are overwhelmingly opposed to him. What's interesting is that uh, Silicon Valley is actually coming around to Donald Trump's side. So is elite opposition to Donald Trump, is it more or less than it was in 2016? It's not at all clear to me. But what will make that situation clear is events, my dear boy, events. So if Donald Trump's policies line out with the best interests of a substantial part of the elite, not to mention the voters, then he'll win. So Donald Trump has followed a Rupert Murdoch type strategy in maintaining ties with one key part of the American elite, and that's the pro-Israel elite. So Donald Trump has alienated the elites in almost every respect. But for those American elites who care passionately about Israel, Donald Trump is clearly their man. He's the most pro-Israel president ever, not even close. And so by being unabashedly pro-Israel, he can count on the support of countless billionaires for whom Israel is a top issue. Right. He, that's how he got so much support from Sheldon Nadelson and a good reason why he's likely to receive a great deal of support from Sheldon Nadelson's widow and countless other billionaires who pressured America's leading universities to shut down these pro-Palestine anti-Israel campus protests uh, you see the power of billionaires in shutting down these protests because right, one billionaire with his funding is going to outweigh the influence of 10,000 angry pro-Palestine protesters. And now these billionaires are on the side of Israel. They're very likely to uh, side with Donald Trump in this election and much of Silicon Valley. So Joe Biden has alienated a slice of elites who would normally never even consider voting for Donald Trump. But a substantial section of Silicon Valley is now moving in a Donald Trump direction. And uh, pro-Israel billionaires are going to overwhelmingly vote for Donald Trump. And Jews for whom safety of Israel is an important issue, they're going to be voting for Donald Trump and moving away from the left. And Trump has had no nuance on this issue. Like you realize he's got a winning issue to secure massive amount of financial and media support by being clearly the most pro-Israel president. So Rupert Murdoch used the same strategy when he funded the development of the Weekly Standard in the mid-90s. Like Murdoch realized he couldn't get anywhere in American life if the elites were 95% opposed to him. So he funded this neocon publication and did other you know, ne neocon friendly things. So he got the support of the tiny but highly influential and well-funded neocon movement. 
And so Fox News has been unabashedly pro-Israel since October 7. I'm walking through Westwood right now. I mean, unabashedly pro-Israel. Just completely one-sided coverage in a pro-Israel direction. And so Jews, most American Jews, vote for the Democratic Party, but a third of American Jews care passionately about Israel, and another third care somewhat. And so Fox News making a play for these highly influential affluent uh, demographics by being completely on the side of Israel in this conflict. And so many American Jews who traditionally voted for the left are now watching Fox News and are quite likely to vote for the Republicans. Uh, Donald Trump's support among white people is down significantly since 2016. So his support among Jews is up, his support among blacks is up, support among Latinos and Asians is up. But his support among white Americans is it's down significantly from 2016. And it's not clear whether the increase in minority votes is going to be enough to make up for his decrease in the, the white vote. I think he's dropped in the white vote because in the professions and in high IQ circles, it's just considered unfathomable, absolutely unthinkable to vote for Donald Trump. And so the elites of successfully you know, accomplished changing the law in New York, assembling prosecutions of Donald Trump around the country. They hamstrung his first term. Now, this could backfire if Republicans repeat these tactics to hamstring Joe Biden and the Democrats, if the Republicans come with a no mercy attitude, and if the Republicans uh, in the 2024 presidential campaign, right, they may ruthlessly replace 50,000 civil servants with people who are strongly pro-Trump and then make you know, dramatic changes to American society. Uh, Joe Biden has been very effective at appointing judges, more effective than any other Democratic president in memory. So, I love just watching how the two sides are playing the game. Right now, there's so much energy unleashed by this guilty verdict. Where's it going to go? Is it going to primarily flow in a pro-Trump direction, in an anti-Trump direction, towards anarchy, towards you know, criminal violence and protesting, to increasing cynicism? further breakdown of social cohesion and social trust. One good thing about this verdict is that it, uh, it does away with the idea that uh, the law is value neutral, that it's objective, that uh, the people operating in a courtroom are just officers of the court, just doing their job. Right? Laws are always enforced by individuals who have subjective biases. Uh, the law's always been intensely political. And so, there's no necessary correlation between a guilty verdict and the truth of a matter. We saw this in the O.J. Simpson criminal trial where he's found not guilty of a double murder that he clearly committed. Now we see in this Donald Trump trial how the law can be completely rearranged to prosecute one guy who poses a political threat. And so, will this result in fewer people serving on juries? This result in less trust in the justice system? What will be, what will be the pushback to all this energy that's unleashed right now? I'm, I'm right wing, so I'm mainly reading on Twitter about uh, all these you know, angry Trump supporters reacting to the verdict. So we all live in a bubble, I live in mine. 
I'll be getting a highly distorted view of things. So through much of Donald Trump's political life since 2015, he has fired up his opposition much more effectively than he's fired up his supporters. Now, with this massive democratic victory, will they at last fire up their opposition more than they fire up their supporters? Like, who gets energized? Right? Who becomes the most passionate? Who becomes the most committed? Who becomes the most driven? And will they become passionate and effective in passionate in effective ways or in silly ways? And it's very easy to be angry and passionate about things and act in a self-destructive manner. So I'm curious to see if the Trump team will take the energy and the donation unleashed by this verdict and use it in a productive or will it be used in a non-productive manner. I'm going to side with productive. I'm going to predict productive because it seems to me that the people running Donald Trump's campaign are incredibly effective. Right? Trump's consistently ahead in the polls. It looks like his campaign managers know what they're doing. And so, I remember before Alvin Bragg brought this first conviction, it looked like Donald Trump was effectively politically dead. The New York Post mocked his announcement that he was going to run for president in 2024. And uh, he seemed like yesterday's news, he was effectively banned from Fox News for about six months. Fox News did everything it could to fire up support for Ron DeSantis. And then the Democrats bringing all these prosecutions of Donald Trump brought Trump back from the political dead. And the more they prosecute Donald Trump, right, the more popular he gets. G'day mate, 40 here. So it's just at uh, Steven Pinker delivering a lecture on rationality at the Daniel Pearl and your lecture, Daniel Pearls, the Wall Street Journal reporter who was beheaded in uh, Pakistan back in circa 2003. Anyway, a few thoughts on the Trump conviction. Uh, I want to try to fit it into wider trends, and that is the Republican Party is increasingly becoming the low IQ party. Right, that uh, the smarter someone is, according to various surveys, the more likely they are to loathe Donald Trump. Right, the higher someone's verbal IQ, the more likely they are to loathe Donald Trump. And <laughs> Trump's defense team was just particularly inept. Right, so the Democrats were particularly efficient. Right, right now this looks like a, a, a big win for the Democrats. Right the Democrats completely rejiggered the law and brought about a case that all sorts of other prosecutors said was not a case. But they made the case viable and they pulled it off. It was a win by being very effective in their legal strategy. While by contrast, the Trump team was just highly ineffective in its legal strategy. And so one downside with increasingly being the party of the low IQ is that uh, your, your experts right, aren't so expert. And you see that with the Republicans, they're increasingly the, the party of the low IQ. And there's a price to be paid for being the, the low IQ party. So when the elites are steadily, ever increasingly on the side of the Democrats, then it's harder to get things done. Because to get things done, Often you get much more valuable help from one billionaire than you do from 25,000 high school dropouts. And so Trump's team you know, ran a really inept defense. Like Trump seems to choose his lawyers on the basis of how good they look. And from all the legal commentators I saw, and that was Stephen Pinker, a lecturer at the School of Law here at UCLA, all the legal experts I've read 
thought that Trump's defense team was like absolutely pitiful. And so it's really hard to get anything done when 90% of the elites are against you, as opposed to if only 75% of the elites are against you, right? If Trump can cleave off 25% of the elites, right, he can still get things done. Right, Rupert Murdoch and uh, News Corporation show that you can get things done, you can make money if you can count on support from 20, 20%, 25% of elites. But if 90, 95% of elites are against you, it's very hard to get anything done. And Trump, like Nixon before him, is often in great danger of having the elites steadily side against him because things work on momentum. And it's just completely socially unacceptable to be pro-Trump in all sorts of uh, elite social circles, growing perhaps ever more unacceptable. And so when Trump was contesting the 2020 election, he couldn't get any high-powered lawyers to take his cases because it just appeared uh, that his case was ridiculous. No high-powered lawyers would take his case. All right, Trump is not exactly assembling the best and the brightest on his various legal teams. And in this case, his legal team was particularly inept and he paid the price. Right? You really want to have the elite on your side. Right? If you want to succeed, right, you, uh, <laughs> you find out who has power and then you give it to them. You flatter them, you tell them how great they are. And if you don't do that, then uh, you're going to have a lot of misery. G'day, mate, 40 here. So another thing that jumps out at me about the news media coverage of the Trump conviction is how giddy the news anchors and the reporters were. And that's not just because they're anti-Trump, right? A lot of the giddiness is because it was an exciting event, all right? And so news is exciting, right? 100,000 people every day moving out of poverty, right? Not exciting. So we've had a billion people move out of poverty in the last, uh, what, 30 years in the world. That's not exciting, and so that doesn't make the news. So you can't confuse what's important with what's exciting. Anyway, this Trump conviction is exciting. So if you're a news reporter, if you're a journalist, if you're a commentator, right, this Trump news enhances your social status because people are paying attention to what you're talking about. Right? My father loved it when people would pay attention to his sermons. So my father was never happier than when he was giving a funeral oration because that's when people listen to him the most intensely. And so when you've got breaking news that's widely discussed, such as the uh, Trump conviction on 24 counts, right, you, the journalist, become the center of attention. And if you're the recipient of a ton of attention, it makes you giddy, right? You feel happy. I remember this news conference in 2004 after three people had tested HIV positive on the pornography industry. And so it was the first time in months that all the major players in the industry had gotten together and there were about uh, 20, 30 TV news cameras on hand and uh, there was tremendous news media attention and it just made all of us in the <laughs> at, at the news conference absolutely giddy because we were the number one news story in California that day and it just made us feel like right at the center of things. So if you have the opportunity to feel right in the center of things, to be the person that people are looking to for information and commentary, it makes you giddy. So yeah, I think a lot of the news media is giddy about the Donald Trump conviction because they loathe Donald Trump. But a lot of the majority of the giddy feeling that was characterizing the news media is just being the center of attention, right? This is the number one topic being discussed in America right now. This is exciting, right? This was not expected. Right. The, the general expectation was not for a guilty verdict, certainly not on all 34 counts. And so when you've got something that's unexpected, 
when you've got something that makes you the center of attention, when you've got something that makes you important, when you've got something that gets the blood flowing, when you've got some drama operating, right? Journalists love drama, right? When, when you've got some drama going and excitement and a feeling of uh, importance, then, uh, then yeah, you're going to feel giddy, right? I would challenge you not to feel giddy when you're the center of attention, right? When people are looking to you for your insights, of course you're going to feel guilty, giddy. Uh, this isn't something weird going on in the, in the news media, right? This is a, a to-be-expected response. And so far, right now, it looks like the, the Democrats are just much more successful and much more competent. They've got the illegal elite on their side. So, for example, the anti-gay marriage crowd, they couldn't find any major law firms to handle their cases because the law firms would be shunned if... They, they argue the side for opposing gay marriage. G'day, mate, 40 here. So I'm just thinking who's going to win the enthusiasm gap. I don't see how this is going to increase the enthusiasm of Democrats, right? They already think he's guilty. So this just confirms their views. It should massively increase the enthusiasm of Republicans. Also, not just Democrats are going to be thrilled by this. All right, establishment Republicans will be thrilled with the Trump conviction. So this could have, could have significant effects of creating a new elite because the, the Republican establishment are happy with this conviction. The Democratic establishment's happy, right? The elite establishment is happy with this conviction, but there's tremendous energy flowing through the dissident streams of American society. And I don't see how this energizes Trump's opposition because he was already guilty in their eyes.